morning, everyone. Good morning. Today I am honored to win the Youth Public Service Award, but for most of my life I had very little knowledge of public service and its power. I stand today, however, as a testament to the transformative nature of public service for both individuals and communities alike. My circumstances growing up were, to quote Langston Hughes, no crystal stairs. I am the proud son of two Latino immigrants, neither of whom received a formal education past the eighth grade. Nonetheless, they provided for me and taught me more than they may ever give themselves credit for. When I was very young, my parents separated and my father left. Already living in tough circumstances, life became even more difficult. It was during this time that I first came to the realization that don't let the bed bug bite and actually be a fair warning. <laughs> I slept on the floor with my clothes and trash bags for many weeks trying to get rid of them. Outside of my house, I was losing friends to gun violence and street-related incidents. The common anxieties of growing up and all of the difficult terrain that all young people must traverse felt magnified because of my circumstances. School became a challenge because of the obstacles I faced, and after struggling for a bit, I was expelled. In my final meeting with administrators, an administrator told me I would amount to nothing. The school I transferred to was notorious for many reasons. My art classroom was littered with rat feces, and I even saw a rat give birth. And no, I did not help. <laughs> the lockers were boarded up and inaccessible, and the walls were covered in graffiti. This environment caused a lack in my desire to go to school. Caused a lack in my desire to go to school. And I missed almost two entire years of school. Many poor decisions landed me in court with a parole officer and a 1.4 GPA. My life was not headed in the right directions, but a few important public servants, educators, were the catalyst to help me turn around and improve my circumstances. It was during my senior year that the path I was on and my outlook for life took a turn for the better. Through the relationships I built in my school, I began to see what was possible for me after high school. After a debate in my U.S. government class, an amazing teacher, Ms. Buchanan, <laughs> gave me the nickname Senator Retire. <laughs> Mr. 45 was already in office, so I had to vouch for an upgrade to President Retire. <laughs> I, became, I became very close to the Global Study Coordinator, Mr. Hipkins, who invited me to many different events. I attended a My Brother's Keeper meeting at the White House, volunteered for Global Ties U.S., and even got to head to the U.S. State Department for a Discover Diplomacy event. Having these experiences, both in and outside of school, changed my perspective on what I could accomplish, and I became extremely interested in careers where I could do what others had done for me. Another administrator at my school, Ms. McCarty, who has no relation to Cardi B, by the way, <laughs> told me about the Leading Men Fellowship a program ran by the Literacy Lab. This program focuses on closing the achievement gap in early childhood education by recruiting and nurturing the talents of young men of color who are recent high school graduates. The young men are placed for an entire school year in a school in their neighborhood to support pre-K students with their early literacy and social emotional development. All I knew about the program when I started was that I'd be working with kids and I'd be getting paid. That was good enough for me. <laughs> Given my low GPA and lack of access to resources to fund my college education, I saw this opportunity as the only positive option for myself. The program began in the summer with a week of rigorous training, learning all about childhood education. We learned about cortisol and its effects on learning for three and four year olds. We learned a social emotional based curriculum called SEEDS and a plethora of intervention strategies such as transition songs that we would use to help our kids succeed in school. After the intense week of training and honestly awkward singing amongst other young men of color, we were ready to go to our placement sites. I was nervous the first time I walked into the elementary school, but this time it was not because my mother would have to stay at home. The classroom was far from what I expected. The children were all crying, and a lot of them didn't even want to talk to me. For some reason, I expected them to be way nicer. <laughs> After many weeks of persistence, however, I built solid relationships with all of them. However, there's one child in particular who I will never forget. This child was free spirit, a term one of my colleagues uses when referring to children with challenging behaviors. 
Mm -hmm. He would scratch, kick, bite, and do just about everything imaginable. He would tear papers off the wall and throw things across the room. One day, he even said he was going to kill me. <laughs> Despite his behavior, I sat next to him during lunch every single day. I would engage in vibrant conversations about how ain't no is it not proper grammar, and how cockroaches and spiders kind of look the same, but I'm pretty certain they're not, and the base concerning which one of us was Spider-Man. One day, while having lunch with him, he turned to me, mouthful of chicken, and said, I love you, Mr. K. I was surprised because he had threatened my life not too long ago. <laughs> and it made me like I had much more parents. <laughs> I am now in my second year working with him, and he has shown immense growth, both academically and behaviorally. We still have the same conversations every single day, but now he assures me he's Black Panther, so I finally get to be <laughs> Thank God for Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> the Literacy Lab's leading men fellowship opened my eyes to the power of public service. Not only did I see growth in my students, but I also saw growth in myself. My lack of self-confidence was erased as I traveled across the country and even my city, presenting about the importance of the work that I do. My very first time on a plane was as an ambassador for quality education for young men across the country. I even had the pleasure of competing in and winning the Saul Zanz Early Education Innovation Challenge at the Harvard School of Education. Wow. Many <laughs> Thank you. 